Hey guys, hope you're doing well. So I just want to make a quick video because I've released Turbo Tools version 4.11 today. If you're not familiar with Turbo Tools, it's an add-on that basically speeds up your cycles renders, usually around about three to five times. But it also comes with a suite of compositor tools as well. And that's primarily what this update is for. And a feature that Turbo Tools adds to Blender is the ability to interactively use the compositor during playback. And due to a recent Microsoft update that's conflicting with an NVIDIA driver, it needed to be modified in order to avoid crashing. So it's really important you get this latest update. So let's start playing back. We'll notice it's now much faster. The timeline is not juddery. And even if we shift A and I add uh, some nodes in, so let's go with the RGB curve node, for example, we can start interactively modifying this. And there's no stutter at all. So it's completely smooth and it's so stable, we can switch workspaces uh, interactively during playback and it should be fine. I'm probably living on the edge a little bit because I've also got a screen recorder going. I think it's a good demo of just how stable it is, even at high speed playback. But if you're using Blender 4.2 Alpha or later, thanks to Omar Imara from the Blender Foundation or one of the coders, I don't know if he works at the Blender Foundation, if we go to the options panel, we can now change the device that is used by the compositor to calculate the nodes. To in CPU, we can now choose GPU. Now, extremely importantly, if you do intend to use this GP GPU mode of the compositor, you must make sure you're in Blender 4.2 Alpha or later. Because in previous experimental builds of Blender, it doesn't have the full feature set required for this interactive playback. And the reason you, it's useful to use the GPU mode is if we start adding nodes that are quite, you know, slow down uh, performance, like for example, a lens distortion, set this to one. If I add a number of these, you'll see the playback now appears to be quite jerky. And this is because the CPU can't generate the frames as fast as the timeline is moving. Now, what we can do is switch to GPU mode. So let me just stop playback. I'll switch to GPU mode, press play again, and now you'll notice it's going full speed again. And we can sort of, sort of start playing with all these different things in real time. Now, even if we change this to something silly, like 120 or 240 frames per second, and turn on frame dropping and the performance options of Turbo Tools, you'll see we're still getting even though we're going at 240 frames a second, we can still interactively change all of these and it's all happening, you know, interactively in there. Even if I just start doing sort of things like, you know, maybe add in a glare node, for example, we'll drop that in there, change it to something like ghosts and make it so that it's no threshold and make it so it's the only thing we can see, turn mix to one. Now we're only getting the result of this glare node, but everything it's still being calculated and I can still change it all in real time at 240 frames per second during playback. And it's still going to be pretty solid as well. We can change, to, as I say, to different workspaces. Now, the next improvement in Turbo Tools 4.11 is the caching system. So if we just turn the, let's, to demonstrate this best, actually, let's go back to CPU mode. And if we play this back, we're going to get really choppy performance just for the same reason as before because there's so many nodes. So let's play this back and you'll see we're, we're not seeing many frames at all. Now, if you don't want to use GPU mode to speed this up, or if it's even in GPU mode a little bit uh, stuttery, we can actually start caching this entire branch. So if I click on a node that I want to cache, so I want to cache this one, and I'll choose cache, uncache to create a cache node. If I play back, so or if I go to a different frame and where there's actually something there, press refresh all. Let's bring this up a little bit so I can actually see it. So refresh all. And that's generated a cache file on the hard disk. But if I play this back, it's only going to be able to show us one of those two cached frames, depending which frame it lands on, because we've got frame dropping enabled. So what I can do is click this update cache button. And then during playback, it's going to generate any missing cache files. Or if something's changed downstream of the cache node, then it will regenerate new cache automatically. 
So let's play this back now with this option enabled, which used to be called Validate Cache. That's changed its name now. Just, I think it's a bit more informative about what it does. So we'll press play now. And it's going to recognize that it's not got cache files and it's going to start caching. And we've still got it set to 240 frames per second as well. But you'll notice it's going much slower now because we're in CPU mode and every single frame it's calculating these, uh, this entire sort of expensive branch of nodes. And then when it gets to the end, when it's cached all of the frames, if we give it a second, it's going to speed up until it finds some more that it's not yet cached. And then it's going to speed up. And we've got full speed now, even with all of these nodes here, uh, using the CPU. So that's something good as well. And if I, if I leave this option checked and change something, it's going to start recaching. If I uncheck it and I change something, it won't. So if I uncheck that and start moving stuff that is downstream, of this cache node, nothing's going to happen. But as soon as I turn update cache back on, it's going to recognize that something's changed in the nodes that are downstream of this cache, and it's going to start regenerating that cache again. And let me just change it to GPU mode as well, so that it caches a little bit faster. So press play now, and you'll see it's calculating much faster now um, because we've changed it to GPU mode over here. And then when it's finished, it's going to go full speed again. And we can, uh, if we want to, we can continue making modifications uh, over here. So let's put down a uh, RGB curve node again, drop that in here. And now we can start changing things again, all in real time. And then, of course, the reason that you would do all this is so that when you've finished, you can output different variations using the publishing tools that Turbo Tools offers which you can find here in the Compositor's Turbo tab. I'm going to publish it now. If I publish it without Quick Publish, it's going to discard the cache temporarily and use the full branch during publishing. So it's going to recalculate the entire branch. So I'll just use Blender's output properties to choose a file name and location for the new file that I'm about to publish. So if I click the Publish button to publish the animation, See, it goes through incredibly quickly because I've still got the device set to GPU. And if we come down and click on View Published Animation, we can see that those changes we've made have now been rendered out into a new file that we've set in Blender's output properties. Now, if we change the device back to CPU, the publish operation is going to be much slower. As we can see here, it's moving along really slow. So cancel that with Escape. And this is where the Quick Publish option is going to come in handy. So just double check, I've still got the CPU set as the device. And we'll turn on Quick Publish. And that basically means that when it publishes, it's going to discard all, this, all these nodes downstream of the cache. So with Quick Publish enabled, click on Publish Animation. And you can see that even though we're using the CPU now, it's much faster because it doesn't have to calculate anything downstream of that cache node during the publishing process. And there we go. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and I would strongly recommend that you download the update as soon as possible just to make sure that you can avoid any errors or crashes that are going to be caused by that Microsoft update conflicting with the NVIDIA drivers. And make sure you subscribe to the channel to get a notification of a really exciting video that's coming up in the next few days where I'm going to ask the question using my new hardware, an RTX 4080 Super, whether or not Turbo Tools is still worth it with a, such a high-end graphics card. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.